Newness of Life World Outreach Center, our weekly Bible study that occurs on Tuesday night. I'm Pastor Larry Jackson, and this is my wife, Pastor Patricia Jackson. And Good evening. We're actually sitting in for our senior pastors, Pastor Oliver and Carolyn Williams. We thank them for the privilege and the opportunity that they've given us in order for them to come and, for us to come and share the word tonight. Amen. So me and my boo will actually teach some teaching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and we pray that God has opened your heart in order for you to be able to receive from, from the Holy Spirit Amen. everything that he has to say to you tonight. We're actually wrapping up a topic night that we've been on for the last uh, uh, three weeks. This is our fourth week on that particular topic. Yes. So we pray that you came and ready to receive. Amen. If, if, you're, if you're actually here tonight and you're watching by way of Facebook, we may ask that you make sure that you share this with someone. Share that, share that uh, watch party with other people. Invite them in so they can come and be a part of it. This is a very important teaching. We want you to get all that you can from it, and we want you to be able to share this with other people so that they can get all they can as well. Amen. If you're on our website, which is www.nloc-outreach.com, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the message, and you'll be able to see it over and over again, so this won't be the only time that you'll be able to view it. And also, the third way for you to be able to view it is on our uh, our YouTube channel, yes. which is Newness of Life World Outreach Center. You'll be able to go to our YouTube channel and be able to see this message as well as a library of other messages that's on that YouTube channel as well as what's on the website. And you'll be able to go back and watch them over and over again. And you'll have the ability to be able to share those messages with other people Amen. as well. So we invite you in just to come and be a part of this Bible study and tell everybody where it's going to be every Tuesday night because there's good word going forth. And we want to make sure that you have a life-changing experience mm -hmm. and you'll be able to receive everything that God has for you. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. We're going to go ahead and get started. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to come and share your word again with these, your precious people. We pray that they have opened their hearts in order to be able to receive from you and that because of the soils of their heart, this good word, this incorruptible seed will be planted in their hearts and it'll grow farther and multiply. And in the midst of that, we'll make sure that we give you all the yes, praise, God. all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' holy and precious name. Jesus and we name. say amen. Amen. Right? Well, Pastor Pat, tonight we're actually wrapping up a series of teachings that we've been doing on the trap of pride yes the trap of pride and i feel like at this point in time in all of our lives this is a very important topic for us to talk about because god has actually revealed to me that this is the genesis of many issues that we deal with in our life mm -hmm. and many times we'll see the 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 stopping of our faith moving forward in our life and or the hindrance of our faith moving forward in our life and the direct result of it is pride. It's pride. We'll see the ills in our society that's taking place mm -hmm. and we'll wonder what's causing all of that. And you look at the condition of a man's heart, which Paul describes in Second Timothy chapter three, and a major part of that is the issue of Pride. pride. Amen. Yes. yes. In fact, God talks about pride in Proverbs chapter 16. This is our foundation scripture chapter Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 through 19. He says pride goes before destruction. Mm -hmm. So the end result of any practice of pride is destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Better to be humble, a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoils with the with the proud. Yes. He also says in Proverbs chapter eight, verse 13, he says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in an evil way and a perverse mouth. I hate. So God is clearly establishes the fact that he hates pride. Yes, yes. And the reason why he hates pride is for, because of a couple of things. Number one is direct rebellion against him. Yes. And oftentimes people might say in, in this discussion of pride and this teaching on pride, well, I'm not rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. Well, the rebellion comes in is, is based upon the position that you take in your life. Yes. If you position yourself first in your life without the leading of God, the Holy, the God, the Holy Spirit and God, the Father and God, the Son, mm -hmm. then in essence, you are putting yourself in first position. We're supposed to be followers of Christ, Christ. not leaders. Not, yeah, yeah. Amen. That's He's right. given us authority. That's right. But that still doesn't give us the right to lead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
It's kind of like God being the sheriff and you being the deputy. Mm-hmm. Even though you're the deputy, you have the authority that he's given you. Yes. But you're still not the sheriff. You're not the sheriff. That's right. Okay. That's right. You're still not the sheriff. Yeah. You're supposed to follow him. Mm-hmm. He's the leader. Yes. You're the follower. Yeah. So when we're in a place of pride in our lives, when we're in a place of pride in our lives, we've put ourselves in a first position. That means we're relying upon our answers, not his. Not his answers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're putting his answers as secondary to ours. Mm-hmm. And that is a representation of the fact that we have pride in our life. So God wants us to first and foremost know his heart. Okay. Know his attributes. So that you can understand how to take that second position and above all, understand that you can trust him with your life. In fact, when we declare Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's what we're doing. That's the declaration that we're making. We're making a declaration that, number one, I believe in you, Mm -hmm. that you are the son of God. And number two, that I'm submissively following you. Because you're my Savior and my Lord. And my Lord. So Lord means I've established you in my life as the one that I'm going to follow. Mm -hmm. You're going to lead me. But pride says, no, I don't. (laughs) Okay? Pride says, even though I may have said it, Uh, (laughs) maybe I don't believe that. Okay? (laughs) So therefore, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, well, then how effective can I be if that's the position that you're taking? That's right. That's right. And that's the key right there. Yes. We want God to be effective in our lives. Absolutely. You know, and, and he can't be effective if if we do it all ourselves. You know, um, if we knew all the answers, then we wouldn't need Christ. Absolutely. So there's a need for us to need him. That's right. And so in order for us to um, to let him know that, uh, God, I need you. You know, that's one of the ways we do it is by allowing him to lead and guide us. That's right. You know, not not in your own ability, not in your own might, but in his ability and in his might and his strength. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing we have to do is that we have to know his heart. Yeah. We have to know who he is and know yeah. his attributes. You can look at the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter five. Yes. And you can learn God's heart. If you want to know him, look at the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. And but you don't see pride in that. And that's no pride in that. No. OK. And whenever pride shows up in our life, it has symptoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has symptoms. It's kind of like a cold. When you know you have a cold, you got either a congested nose or a running nose. You're coughing. Mm-hmm. You have the symptoms yeah. that says this is probably a cold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have symptoms in our lives whenever pride is present. The first one that we talked about last week was the, the symptom of, of fear. fear. Yeah. When fear shows up, you automatically retract to your way of doing things because fear is present Mm -hmm. and fear is really indicative of the fact that you're not trusting God. First Peter chapter five says that we cast our cares upon the Lord. Yes. Why? Because he cares for For us. us. Mm -hmm. So when we're holding on to something, feeling like we have a better answer and it doesn't work out that way, then fear has a way of setting, taking place in our lives in order to pervert what we're supposed to be doing in our trust, trust for God. For God yes. Okay. Because we haven't cast the care. Mm-hmm. But so, so therefore when we don't get our way and our answer is indicative of the fact that we haven't cast the care. Yeah. You trust in you more than you trust in God. Yeah. Another way, another symptom that shows up in our life is the denial of the truth. Yeah. When truth gets presented, we be, we start to deny the truth, the truth because again, yeah. we feel like we have a better answer yeah. and even stubbornness sets in. Yes. Yes. One of the most frustrating things in the world to deal with is to deal with a person that is absolutely stubborn when you got an answer sitting right there on the table <laughs> in front of you. And both of you know that it's true. But the person is just simply being stubborn and not being willing to move the truth and yeah. won't accept the truth. Mm-hmm. OK, so God feels the same way when when we're actually being stubborn and not accepting what he has given us as the truth Mm -hmm. because our freedom comes from truth. From truth, yes. Amen? And another thing that's a symptom that we deal with 
when it, when it comes to pride is ingratitude. Ingratitude. A heart that's not grateful yes. to God. And yes. last week you gave the example of the Israelites and them wandering through the wilderness for mm -hmm. 40 years when the answer was there on a 40 day trip, they could have gotten things done. Yes. Yes. But because of their own denial of the truth, mm -hmm. because of their own fears, selfishness and their own comfort out of the bondage that they had gotten used to that God brought them out of. Yes. <laughs> they stayed in a place of ingratitude. Mm hmm. When God is right there before you, he's proving himself to you, but yet you're not grateful for what he's doing. That's right. That's Amen. Right. That's right. And then the last symptom that we talked about was the symptom of selfishness. And when you wrap everything up that we talked about, the fear, the denial of the truth, the ingratitude, a lot of it is born in this symptom that Selfish. pride creates, which is selfishness. Selfishness, yes. I'm all about me. Mm -hmm. So therefore, again, when, we, when we're talking about selfishness and we, we know that selfishness has shown up, it's all about us taking first position yes. ahead of God. Mm -hmm. we, want God we want to give God what we want to do, and then we want God to put his stamp of approval on something that he hasn't manifested, that he, manifest, that he hasn't yeah. approved of. Yeah. So yeah. our own selfishness many times will actually introduce the fact that we are in a place of pride. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So this week, since we've talked about the selfish, we talked about the symptoms, symptoms. of pride mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. This week, we want to wrap things up talking about how do I get rid of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? How do I, when I've identified the symptoms of pride, mm -hmm. and I know the heart of God, and I've yeah. identified God's heart and what God wants from us. Yeah. Okay? How do I get rid of the issues of pride in my life. Because saints of God, what we have to understand, that nobody is immune from pride. Nobody. Okay? Everybody can sip on the Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, I don't care how long you've been in your walk with God, even Jesus got affronted, got fronted, uh, confronted rather, when, he, when Satan was dealing with him and, and, and confronted Jesus on the mountain after he came, came out of the out fast. Of yes. He was trying to get Jesus to enter into a place of pride based upon what he felt like the flesh would tell him yeah, to do. Did, mm -hmm. But Jesus answered him and kept giving him the word. He said that the man word. shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He kept giving him the word. And because of that, what did the devil do? He fleed. Yeah. Because he chose God in first position. That's right. God the Father in first position that's right. That's right. versus his own pride. That's right. That's why Jesus always said, I never do anything unless I see my father Fathers do. do. It. That's right. That's right. I only say what my father says. That's right. Amen. That's right. So let's talk about how do we get rid of pride. Okay. And the first way to get rid of pride is a heart filled with the word. Yeah. I, 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 I think that um, in order for us to eradicate pride out of our lives, the word is really the final authority for everything. It's the basis for um, uh, the Christian life. No the word, word of no God faith. is, you know, that's right. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God on a continual basis. But, you know, pride deceives us, Pastor Larry, into thinking that we can do life on our own. Yes, that's and, exactly right. Yeah, and that we are capable, that we are intelligent and independent, that we, you know, we are unstoppable. You know, we, yes. we get this attitude that, you know, I graduated from Harvard and, <laughs> you know, and I have a, a Ph.D., D.D. and all of this. And, and we, we get so caught up on self. Yes. And, and again, God is not the driver. He's not your chauffeur. And he wants to be your chauffeur. Mm -hmm. He wants to be your 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 um, your guide. You know, yes. he wants to be that person that leads you. But you know, um, the truth of the matter is, is that we need him. Absolutely. We can't do without him. We need his help. We need his love. We need his grace. You know, we need his mercy. We need his courage. We got to have hope. All these things come from the word of God. And so you can't do anything in life without God and his word. So a heart filled with the word of God is necessary because the heart is the thing that changes us from the inside out. Yes. It's an inward change. And I want to go to Hebrews chapter 10. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. And this is out of the Amplified Bible. I want to read this scripture. It says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will, God says, he will Mm -hmm. imprint my laws upon their heart and on their mind. I will inscribe them producing an inward change. How does God imprint his laws on your heart? By you getting into the word of God and yes. accepting that yes. word. And when yes. you, once you receive that word, accept that word and believe that word, nothing and nobody can change it. Once you have uh, grasp that word. And some people say, once you have caught the word of God, then nothing can change that. I don't care what circumstance or situation come in your life. Right. When that word gets so embedded in your heart, whatever you face, it's going to come up out of you. And, and, and through thing, your conversation, through your conversation, through your words of confession, right. because, through your prayer. Right. You know, because it becomes our belief because it's imprinted in our heart. That's so right. therefore our responses That's right. to life. That's right. Come from that word because yes. it's, it's a part of us. Yes. It's imprinted on our hearts. That's right. And, and like I heard a pastor say is, is that it actually the word produces wisdom out of us. Absolutely. The wisdom of God comes out of us. And wisdom is the fact that, you know, the difference between right and wrong. Right and wrong. That's it. You know the difference. You know the difference. Yeah. That's what wisdom is. Mm-hmm. You know the difference. And, and at the same time, with the word being imprinted upon your heart, now all of a sudden you deepen your relationship, relationship. with the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's all about relationship. relationship. You know, it's all about relationship. So um, and then the, the second scripture I want to share comes from um, Jeremiah chapter uh, 29 through 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. Let's go. To that scripture quickly. Jeremiah 29 13. Okay. And I'm going to read it again. Out of the amplified version. It says then. With a deep longing. You will seek me. And inquire me. As a vital necessity. I want to stop right there. Yes. Once you have taste. The word of God. You know the Bible say. Oh taste and see. That the Lord is good. Once you have taste the word of God and what I mean by that, once you have experienced the word of God, when you have taken uh, a passage of scripture and you've stood on that scripture, you believed it, you accepted it and it became truth to you. It became a belief system of yours and you actually saw the manifestation of God's hand at work in your life. It gives you a deeper longing for him, a longing for that intimacy, a longing for that relationship, a longing for that closeness with him. So here he's saying that in that deep longing relationship, when you seek me, when you require of me as a vital necessity, as if your life depends upon it, he says, you will find me when you search for me. With Mm -hmm. all of your heart. Mm -hmm. It's like playing um, hide and seek. Right. You know, you hide and you seek and you find him. Once you find that person, you're excited about it. You know, it's the same with our relationship with God. When we seek him, we begin to have more intimacy with him. We learn more about him, about his ways, uh, uh, um, how he thinks, uh, his characteristics, and and that becomes a part of us. It becomes a it becomes an opportunity for our oneness with God to override our oneness with ourselves. That's oh, that's good. Because that's really that's good. That's what pride really and truly is. Is your oneness with yourself that keeps producing this desire to push God mm, aside. That's good. Because I already have the answer. Yeah. But the deeper the relationship with God through His Word. You have more of a oneness with him oneness. because you've established him as Lord and Savior. I have a reliance upon that. I want to hear from you. I won't move without you. Wow, that's good. Wherever you go, I'll follow. I'll follow, yeah. That's really if good. If you don't go, I'm not going. Yeah. And when I go, I know that you're with me. You're with me, yeah. I'm looking to hear from you. 
I'm trusting that I'll hear from you and I'm relying totally upon you. That's why? Good. Because I know that your grace is establishing a love for me that operates my faith. Hmm. See, oftentimes when we see that scripture in Galatians, we think that our love, it, it, that faith worked by love, that's based upon how much we love and present love. Faith worked by love by us knowing how much God loves us. That's right. That's right. And because his word has produced the faith absolutely, in us. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's twofold. It's twofold. You know, we accept his love. You can't give love if you hadn't first accepted it. That's love. right. So you accept his love and then you're able to give it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The last scripture I want to share, and I know this is a familiar verse of scripture for for most of us who are believers, but it says over in Joshua chapter one, verses eight, it says the book of the law shall not depart from my mouth. In other words, we need to keep the word of God in our mouths at right. all times. Again, right. faith comes by hearing the word of God. We got to read the word. We have to say the word. We have to think about the word. We have to ponder on the word. That's we have right. to mother the word. We have to confess the word. Okay. It says it shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read, read that word mm -hmm. and meditate on it day and night. Right. So it shouldn't really be a time um, in the day that we don't even think about the word or we don't think about something as it relates to God's goodness. Yes. And then it says, so that you may be careful to do. So we have a responsibility after we have read, meditate, hear the word, sought after the word. We have a responsibility to do. Yes. Okay. And then it says, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. So you do what has been written. Then... You, Pastor Larry, when you do all of that, you make your, your way, way prosperous, prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yes. Well, you know, you may be saying, well, I'm doing, the, I've read the word, Pastor, but I'm not prosperous, and I, and I don't have good success. Keep doing the word. Keep praying the word. Keep yes. meditating on the word. Keep confessing the word. Accept the word. Believe the word. Do the word, and eventually you'll get to that place of destination. And prosperity is more than commas and a check. Absolutely, you know, prosperity is really and truly about the condition of your life and your relationship in God, mm -hmm. and knowing what is available to you and what's coming to you. Yeah, it, and it's about being able to receive that. That's right. But prospering in life is about the peace of God in your life. That's right. The joy that you have as a result of living mm -hmm. life, and it's about those accomplishments and those things that you're able to come into but if we, if if all of our focus is just on the commas and the paycheck you're gonna miss out on everything else that god has available to you that's right because if if you are in god if you're loving god and he's loving you you have that intimacy with him you, you're going to be successful absolutely regardless of what's going on in your life regardless if 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 there's failure in your life you are still succeeding in god that's right because he said earlier we read that he's always with us that he's not gonna leave us he's right there in the good and in the bad That's so right. we are always successful when we are in christ you win we win we win we win another way to actually eradicate pride from our lives and this is a big one and and, and uh, the word of God has to establish this. Yes. Okay. And that's why we wanted to make sure that we put this point second, but is humility. Yes. That answer is humility. Well, first we got to define what humility is and humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking less about yourself. That's good. <laughs> okay. That's good. It's not thinking less of yourself as it relates to who you are, because if you're establishing your identity of Christ, that exalts you. That that's it. That's okay. It. Yeah. Because, because you're in Christ. You're in Christ. That's it. Okay. That exalts you yeah. because you're in him mm -hmm. and we were crucified with him. That's right. He establishes us and that's where our identity is. Oh, that's good. So when it comes to issues of inequality, forget all that mess because at the end of the day, you're established in Christ. You're established in Christ. You're established you in Christ. You are established in, I like that. You are royal priesthood. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. You are established in Christ. Yeah. So when it comes to the 
issue of humility. It's not about thinking less of yourself. It's about thinking less about yourself mm -hmm. and making sure. Hear me on this, saints. Humility is about making sure that you're not taking the lead and you've put God in second position. That's good. It's about you taking second position and him being the lead. lead yeah. He is Lord and Savior. Yes. You are submitting to that. That's right. Because if you're not submitting to that, that's evidence of pride. Yeah. You're Amen. getting under his getting, way of doing things. You're getting things. under his way of doing things. Let's yeah. go to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. And it's very important for us to understand this about humility. In fact, let me read something first to you before we go there. It said, and, I, and we wrote that God's development of humility in us is necessary for God because the very nature of sin distorts, alters our self-identity. It does. It does. Pride corrupts self-identity. Mm. Our corrupted nature conjures ideas of ourselves that are not objectively true. That's right. In fact, the thoughts that we have of ourselves are more accurate when we apply to God, apply to God than to, to how we feel about our own selves. Now, that's, that's, that's right. Because when we are in Christ, we are whole. We're whole. We're complete. We yeah. should be satisfied. Absolutely. In God. Absolutely. So when I identify with Christ and, and I have his identity in me, then I'm not going to have a problem with humbling myself. That's right. By walking in humility. Keeping him in first position. In first position because I identify with who he is. Yes. And who I am in him. That's right. Yeah. Listen to this, and this again, we referenced this for the past couple of weeks, but Matthew 4 and 4, and I want to read this, it says, uh, starting at verse 1, it says, then Jesus, and this again is Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1, mm -hmm. and I'm reading this from the New International uh, Translation. Okay. It says, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Mm -hmm. The tempter came to him and said, if... You are the son of God. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, he knew who Jesus was. Yeah. But the thing that he wanted to do was he wanted to challenge his identity, mm -hmm. cause him to retract from what God had said. That's right. And rely upon his own answer. answers. Yeah. 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 You, you're right. If you. If you. Yeah. Whenever you hear that word, if. You know, then that means that behind if a lot of times come doubt becomes doubt. Yeah. OK. Yeah. But for the believer that's following Christ, that's assured. Yes. Of your identity. Yes. You don't enter into a place of pride because the enemy cannot tempt, tempt you, you with questions of your identity. That's right. OK. Yeah. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. Mm -hmm. If he can question your identity, he can question the power and the authority that God that gave God you. has given you. Yeah. Yeah. Because God wouldn't have given you that power and authority had you not had his identity. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. The sheriff don't give his power to anybody off the street. That's he gives right. it to a deputy. He gives his, That's right. That's right. Okay. That's good. Jesus answered. Wait a minute. Just lost it. Hang on a second. It says, Jesus answered. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the God. From the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. <laughs> For it is written, we will command his angels concerning you and then he will lift you up in, 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 his, in their hand so that you will, be, you will strike your foot against the stone. You will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him and said, it is written. But do not put the Lord your God to the test. Yes. You notice that every time Jesus answered him, Jesus didn't give him the answer out of his flesh. He gave him what God had already said. That's it. He established that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth that's of God. Right. That's and he right. never retracted to himself that's right. for the answer. And that's what we have to do. That's what we have say to do. Say what God says. Say what God says. Mm -hmm. When the trouble comes, say what God say says. What God because says. as the word is implanted in our hearts, mm -hmm. 
the more the deeper the relationship, the more the intimacy with God. Guess what you're going to start saying? And if pride tries to show up, you got the truth. Yes. Yeah. And it divides. And it divides and conquers. It does. It does. It cuts like any two edged sword. So let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse verse three. Paul writes here, and I'm reading this from the Amplified Translation, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than you ought to think, Mm -hmm. but to think so as you have sound judgment, as God has a portion to each degree, to each a degree of faith, and a purpose designed for service. Yes. So, so Paul is saying here, don't think more highly of yourself, saints of God. Don't think more highly of yourself. He's not saying don't think of yourself. Mm-hmm. He's saying don't think more highly of yourself. That, in other words, let God do the leading. Yeah, yeah. And Submit yourself to God. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I like that. And don't think or boast about your own accomplishments that's right. and, uh, and abilities. That's right. Because the the abilities and accomplishments that you have already received, they came from God. You didn't that's do exactly that on right. your own. That's and exactly see, that's right. where pride comes in. We think that we do it on our own. own. You know, I we went don't. to school for this for four years or six years or ten years. You know, I did this. <laughs> I work hard for this. This is mine. You God know, worked with but you. God was right there yeah, with, with you, you the entire time. God is the reason why you have your job. That's right. God is the reason why you live, move, and have your being. That's right. God is the reason why. Absolutely. It's not in your own ability. It's in his ability in you. Absolutely. Yeah. And lastly, let me share this scripture with you. This is First Peter 5. First Peter 5. Verse 5 and 6. 1 Peter 5, verse 5 and 6. Write that down. 1 Peter 5, verse 5 and 6. He says, likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience, be subject to your elders. Seek their counsel. And all of, and all of you, clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Tie on the servant's apron. For God is opposed to the proud the disdainful, the presumptuous, and he defeats them for he gives grace to the humble. Now, you need to hear that, okay, because God will actually allow defeat to take place in your life because of your own pride. Yes. Because of your own pride. Because like we said earlier in our earlier teaching, in our teaching last week, we talked about how faith is in direct opposition to pride, and pride Mm -hmm. is in opposition to faith. You're not walking by faith when you're walking in pride. You're walking in your own way of doing things. Your own way. Your own way of doing things. But when we're walking by faith, which is how the just is supposed to live, Mm -hmm. when we're walking truly by faith, faith unlocks what grace has for us. Pride doesn't do anything. That's right. Pride doesn't do anything but create the appearance of what I appear to be success, but it's not. It's not. Because you've built a house on sand, and you're coming into the very thing that will destroy you. That Yeah, yeah. And God wants to defeat pride, and the way he defeats pride is through his love for you, and you receiving and accepting that love. Mm -hmm. And he defeats pride through the truth of his word. That overrides your answers. That overrides the answers. You know, the, the second part of this, verse 6, Pastor Larry. Yes. It says, therefore, humble yourselves under, under. That's right. Under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride. Yes. So that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. Yes. So we know and what we've been able to establish based upon the word in order for us to be in a place where we can actually defeat pride. We got to first have the word. Yeah, we got to have the unadulterated. We have to have the uncompromised word of God. We have to receive it and we have to accept it. Yeah. And we have to grow in the relationship with it. Yes. For his wisdom to be implanted in our hearts and to spring out of our lives Mm -hmm. that we act upon. That's good. So we're not seeking our own answer. Okay. 
based upon our lack of knowledge, mm-hmm. we seek his answer yeah. based upon his knowledge. His knowledge. That's within us. Yeah, that's good. So this is how you eradicate pride. Whatever is more dominant in your life is what you're going to respond to. It's what you're going to respond and react to, yeah. Please hear me on this, saints. Whatever is more dominant in your life is what you're going to respond to. So when God's word is more dominant in your life, then that's where your response is going to come because that's where the wisdom of God comes forth. That's the reason why he said, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. Okay. Which means you're accepting him yeah. and his righteousness, and all these things all will be added unto you. All these things will be so added unto you. So that's where we have to start. And if we don't have enough word, guess what? It's available to you. <laughs> you can get as much of it as you want. It's it free. It is not restricted. <laughs> it is free. <laughs> that's right. You don't have to pay for it. All you have to do is receive it and just live by it. That's right. You can get it by way of the book the bible absolutely you can get it by the way of an app on your phone your ipad your kindle any electronic device you can download a bible app even in in the new cars uh the new automobiles the way they make it now is it, it's bluetooth accessible you can <laughs> do everything right. you can right. listen to the word all day every day if you That's want exactly to exactly right on the computer you know uh youtube it the word is out there, so it's no excuse. So the relationship with the Lord through his word and through the Holy Spirit actually produces humility in us. It does. Because the more, the deeper the relationship mm-hmm. with him, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the more humble we become. Yes. Okay? Yes. We become submissive. Yeah. We become submissive to the things that God wants for our lives, and the more humble mm-hmm. we become, in that process of the relationship with, we look for answers from God. The more, the more we deepen our relationship yeah, with him. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you don't rebel against it. You yeah. make sure that he's in first place. Yeah. yeah. And you want to get those answers from God. You know, absolutely. You, you, you want to seek after him to make sure that you're going in the right direction, that you're doing, you know, the things that you should do to make sure you you're on the right path and absolutely. stay Focus on those things that you need to stay focused on. You can't do that in life without him. I don't care what kind of vision you have for life. Yeah. God needs to be at the first at the number one for that vision. He right. needs to be in first place in order for that vision to take place, whether it's for business, whether it's for your marriage, That's vision right. for the ministry, vision, whatever kind of vision you have for your life, your own personal life. Put God first. Let him be your GPS system. And again, if you have issues of pride and you've owned up to them, yes, <laughs> you've identified them, yes, you, your detector has gone off, and you know the carbon monoxide is in the room. Okay, the way to get rid of it is first and foremost being filled with His Word, mm-hmm. and then secondly being filled with humility that's as a result of his word yeah yeah and i want to leave tonight by giving you some things um by asking yourself these questions um this is a way that you can examine yourself to see if maybe perhaps you are uh walking in pride in some areas and just because you may be prideful in one area doesn't mean that you're prideful in all areas but you know again we are identifying pride in our lives and then we want to uh, uh we see the symptoms of pride and we want to eradicate pride and so if you answer yes to one or more of these questions then that means that there's an area that you probably need to go back and examine so these are ways that you can um, examine yourself by asking these questions number one do you always have to have your way in a matter do you always have to have your way in a matter okay Mm -hmm. that's one way you can test yourself the second way is Do you refuse to listen to the advice of others? Mm -hmm. Do you refuse to listen to the advice of others? (laughs) If you just do what I tell you, Pastor Larry. (laughs) No, I'm just teasing. (laughs) Um, The third one is, are you slow to apologize when you have committed a wrong? 
Are you slow to apologize if you have committed a wrong? Again, these are ways that you can examine yourself. Right. You ask yourself these questions. And if you're answering yes to any of these things, that's, that means that's an indication that there's pride somewhere. And the good thing about it is, is God is your helper. He'll help you to alleviate and get rid of it and That's eradicate right. it. Amen. That's right. The fourth question you want to ask yourself, do you lie to give false appearance of a situation to protect your perceived image? Do you lie to give a false appearance of a situation to protect your perceived image? Question number five. Do you often boast about your success and achievements? Mm. Do you often boast about your success and achievements? Number six, do you ignore or dismiss those around you when they don't say or do things the way you do? Let me say that one again. Do you ignore or dismiss those around you when they don't say or do things the way you want them to? And last but not least, do you lack the desire to give to God and to give to others? Those are ways that you can examine yourself to see if you are walking in pride. You cannot be the solution to anyone's problem filled with pride. Amen. 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 I think that wraps it up for us um, on this subject of pride. We are so glad again that you tuned in with us um, on this subject. We hope that you have learned a lot just like we have. We've had to examine ourselves and, and look at areas in our lives where we've been walking in pride. Even, even in our relationship with yeah. each other as a married couple, we've identified some things where we, we need to correct and get aligned. And so that's what the Word of God is all about. Absolutely. It comes to correct and and to give us direction and instructions, and, and that's okay um, to be able to receive that. So we're going to pray, and, um, and again, thank you for being with us. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to uh, be in the Word of God, to just learn of you and to learn of your ways, Father, because it's our heart's desire that we do the things that are pleasing to you. We want you to be the first um, God in our life. We want you to be um, in first place in our lives. We want you to be the compass for our lives, oh God, because we don't know everything. And sometimes we get it wrong and we think that it's in our own ability, in our own strength, and in our own might, but it's not, Father God. We don't ever want to forget you or leave you out of the equation. You said to seek ye first your kingdom, your way of doing things, and all these things that we have need of, they will be added. And so, Father, we want to always put you first in everything and so father we thank you for that and so i speak blessings upon your people tonight yes i thank you lord god that you will continue to cover them throughout the thank week you, father i thank you no evil shall befall them no hurt harm or danger will come not their dwellings no accident will overtake them father god no pandemic will have control over their lives and i just thank sense you. that there's someone watching tonight who who needs healing in their physical body if that's you i want you to put your hand where you need to be healed put your hand where you hurt put yes. your hand on the area of your body where there's sickness and let's agree with you tonight father i yes. take authority yes. over yes. sickness and disease in yes. jesus name i thank you god that the word of god says that you sent your word to heal us and that healing is the children's bread. And so I declare and I decree life, heal, healing, and wholeness into that individual's life and in their bodies right now. From the very crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. Their Thank body you. functions in the perfection in which God has created it to function. Every organ, every joint, every bone, every tissue, every muscle, every cell of their being will work in the way that you have created it to work. And Father, we'll forever give you the glory, the honor, and yes. all of the praise in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we want uh, don't want to leave here tonight without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. All you have to do is just repeat after me. It's very simple. Just say, Lord, come into my heart. 
live in my life. Be Lord over my life. Forgive me of all of my wrongdoings. And today I make you Lord over my life in Jesus name. Amen. If you believe that yes. prayer, if you simply confess that prayer, then you are now a part of the kingdom of God. You are in the family of Christ. And so we welcome you tonight. And we don't want to leave here again without letting you know that there's information that's on our website, nlwoc-outreach.com. You can go to our website. There's information for you. You can get that information, read it, so you'll know what's next for you in the kingdom of God. Amen. We love you so much. Those of you who are watching by way of web, those of you who are members of NLOC, we want to give you an opportunity to give. The Bible has already declared that if we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measures pressed down, shaken together and running over. He will cause men to give into our bosom. He also said to bring the tithe into the storehouse. He said, prove him and see if he won't open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. That blessing is the empowerment to, for wealth and to get wealth. And so we want to give you an opportunity tonight to give. Um, those of you who are not members of NLOC, again, you can give by uh, the way of web. You can go to the tab that says give online and you can plant your seed there. Again, we love you. We speak blessings over your life, over, um, over the entire uh, week, uh, the upcoming week. We speak protection over you and yes. we thank God for you being with us again. We love you. God bless you. God bless you.